We have with us Avantika. She is a DJ, a music producer. She's been in the business of music for 10 years. She is the queen of house music in India. So Avantika, what's the hardest part about being a DJ? Um, firstly, thank you for that amazing introduction, uh, Ambika. Uh, I think the hardest part about being a DJ comes first. Um, being a female DJ in an in industry which globally, as you know, has been dominated by men. Um, entering into that industry while being a female, it is, it can be quite challenging. And I think the hardest part is about creating acceptance in a world where you're looked at uh, and almost judged. And this happens uh, from, you know, from literally the people you are closest to. Uh, the hardest part is actually gaining their respect and um, helping them understand that there is, you know, a world of music, actual music and happiness beyond the parties, you know. So the hardest part is consistency, like how do you consistently um, stay authentic to yourself? Uh, how does that pressure around you not get to you where people are also almost trying to convince you to play Bollywood because there is you know that there is more of money course. there's way more money in Bollywood how do you not allow that kind of pressure to get to you and say maybe I should maybe I shouldn't or let this like white noise around you get to you which is uh, it's hard because you know 10 years ago when I did um, when I did start whatever this journey was at that point I, I didn't know that I would be a DJ or would I be a producer or would I be a singer or what would I be 10 years ago there was literally like no avenues you know you didn't have access you kind of had to create that access and living in India being a female telling your parents that like hi you know I'm going out and playing at what the did they say when you told them uh, well, but let's go back when did you realize because we had a conversation I think uh, uh, when you were out of college, into your first uh, work schedule and you're like, I don't want to do this, I want to do music. Yeah. So what made you want to do music as a career? Uh, I think it's been very instinctive for me and something that's actually very personal and also spiritual. Uh, I do think that I got exposed to some very good music, whether it was global or Hindustan, uh, Hindustani classical at a very young age and I have my parents to thank for that you know from you can see the entire LP collection of theirs here from you know you name it the Beatles to Bob Marley to uh, Chet Faker to Madonna to, um, to, to Elvis Presley you know uh, that kind of exposure when you are so young it kind of gets I think subconsciously ingrained inside you and manifests in very different ways. But and when you told them that's what I want as a career, what did they say? They're like, great, <laughs> you will be our Madonna. <laughs> no, at that point, I don't think I phrased it like I'm trying to make a career out of it. It was more uh, from the point of view of that, hey, this is something that's coming naturally to me and I want to see if it works out. You know, touch what they had been extremely, they have been extremely supportive. Um, I did get asked a lot of questions like, you want to be in you want to make a career out of pressing play why did we send you to business school and give you this crazy you know education if all you wanted to do was press play so that was really difficult uh, and i had to there was a lot of education that you have to um you have to kind of keep working on how to educate that person how to create awareness right um they were confused in the beginning like any parent or Indian parent especially would be they were confused they're like what what is this like what's going on you wanted to be a producer now you're a DJ and like you know you're on these you know your curfew is 1 30 a.m. and I'm looking at them I'm like but my set starts at 2 a.m. like what do I how do I do this and they're like nope as long as you live in our house these are our rules and you know it's an unsafe city Delhi is the most unsafe city for a female like there's no way you're coming home at 5 in the morning and I'm just like, please, you know, you have to trust me. So much resilience and patience. But how did you change that? And at which level, at which point did they say, okay, it's really cool, you can go be a DJ? Because, I mean, we do know men and, I mean, the, the, the people, they consume alcohol, drugs, I mean, the scene, it can go anyway. So, how did you convince them or at which point did they get convinced? Um, I they think hired your bouncer. 
<laughs> no, no, no. They didn't hire me a bouncer. Maybe they did. Maybe they hired yeah, someone maybe, who's watching yeah. me the whole time, being like, "Come any closer, pow!" But no, I think um, so. I it's interesting. Like with my mom, it took a much longer time to to convince her. But with dad, he's been very, you know, accepting from the get go. I think he's his life, his journey. If you hear it, if you know it, um, it's. absolute it's so adventurous right so i think that he's kind of seeing that in me and uh, he kind of let me off the hook <laughs> easier with mom it was specifically last year when i played at the gin explorers club in um, delhi where there were 4000 people and i was a female dj closing the festival in her eyes i suddenly gained a lot of respect and recognition finally and as i think as a human being your all you want is acceptance right like all you want is to be understood and heard and truly like um yeah truly truly understood so i think that was a moment there was a turning point where she was like oh shit she actually knows what she's doing like there's some credibility here and i'm seeing it with my own eyes um that's when things kind of pivoted and um i've not been asked or question rather why things are hap- not happening fast enough or why i am doing what i am doing why i am consciously choosing to take 3 th- to 4 flights 3 to 4 days in a row why i am consciously choosing to you know sit here for hours and not speak to anyone and not want to go out and socialize and them being kind of concerned being like shaadi ka time ho gaya hai ab you know <laughs> so so it's been so yeah, being so cool and yet going through that whole getting the whole shaadi question how do you deal with that uh you remain cool like always remain cool <laughs> i think that's um i mean the shaadi question in india is inevitable right and i have you know my my real sisters they are married they're friends of yours you're married you know happily married with two kids and you're so cool um i just feel like there's no boundary when it comes to you know setting a limit for yourself that oh this is the age or this is the right time and i'm a woman and this might happen i mean look around us there's a successful female uh, you know news anchor interviewing me right now and uh, <laughs> and us women were trying to we're really trying you know we're trying to find our own methods and avenues and um, and support systems And amazing yeah so so let for everybody wants to become a dj let's go back in time and i want to know if they all want to start what do they need to go study where did you go study and uh, what should people do to educate themselves to be professional dj's um i think the first first and foremost thing is if you have that itch to want to um play music be a dj produce follow that itch it's really important it's really really that's that's your literally your insides honestly telling you what you want and who you are um i would say that to to now go further definitely keep listening to really good music um you know ensure that you have great playlists keep discovering music make other people hear that uh, that music as well and slowly you will start seeing that you know you have more access to places you can go like clubs and parties and you start seeing DJs playing there right because now you've come into this like really cool social setting you've got a drink you're you know you've got a good sound system now watch those DJs and see what they're doing like what equipment are they playing on are they using softwares um you know what are these knobs and buttons like try to be a little inquisitive about what's going on in front of your eyes why is there like this vinyl player why is there a you know a midi controller out there a synthesizer lying there like why is there a microphone as well if it's just a dj set so start observing things and um sooner or later when you feel that you've got a good playlist going and you have um had enough access or navigated your way through to get to a console by the way that's the console right there um then you know you start playing and you just have to you just have to go out there and get get your hands dirty um just keep learning unlearning watching other people um taking notes creating good workflows invest in good pen drives that you know to be a good dj you need really good pen drives because that's where you're going to be stashing well if you're playing on cdjs on pioneer cdjs 
uh, you you will invest in that or just good tech invest in really good tech from the beginning save your money invest in good tech invest in a good pair of headphones invest in really good monitors um and if you cannot get access to cdjs just put yourself out there and start djing small clubs dungeons basement friends after party alone in your room literally just keep keep your uh, keep at it where With do you your, go study to be a dj or to study well today you have uh, innumerable options i think you know india you've got several great music schools where you can learn how to produce you can learn how to um dj you can learn on vinyls which is you know which is the best way of learning that's how i learned i learned on vinyls and then moved on to digital um so a lot of schools you can access classes online there are several um actually not several there's a lot of free information out there that you can access and there's quite a lot that you can pay for um i've actually done both and i found merit in both i did have the good fortune of going and studying at a very magical place in new york city called dubspot and um this was 9 year 10 years ago um almost 10 years ago so 10 years ago finding the right because india didn't have anything um i was like where should i go what should i do maybe maybe this place and got very inspired by a female dj who is also a who is also a sonic healer uh, her name is satya hinduja she, I, you know i really looked up to her she was the like for me at the forefront of the game and she was enrolled in this place called dubspot so i spoke to her about it and enrolled in that it was magical i was learning production and djing and i met like people from all walks of life all diversities so i really tried and then came back to india and just threw myself into the deep end by cold calling people and saying hey i'm a dj now you know um can i play at your place like do you know what's going on hey i remember you used to work for this brand like so what's so what are you up to these days they're like you haven't spoken to me in like 3 years what's up and i'm just like i'm a dj now <laughs> like, so what's the art of networking for cuz that's really important right yeah. to get gigs people need to know you're a dj and yeah. you're available um, so what's the art of networking what did you do just cold calling and that's what everybody should do uh, no that is also what you should do i think um putting yourself out there in every sense is so important right like just be who you are and if who you are is asking someone directly that hi like i'd like this then that's who you are but not everybody has that skill to or develops that skill to just you know say what you want uh, try to keep building on that relationship and then finally network 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 uh, there are two paths to it i guess like one would be that you are a more introverted person and dj and you don't really want to do that that's when you need representation and by representation i mean good management people you actually uh, vibe with whose um, whose values and your values kind of like match and who can actually be a very close representation to the outside world of who you are right and then do the same thing for you um and the other one is that you have to kind of also learn to break out of that shell which is that if you are that introverted person please try, do try to make yourself a little uncomfortable like put yourself in uncomfortable situations uh, learn to solo travel go to attend festivals but whom did you observe like which dj's did you so, attend uh, and see wow they're doing it so well oh my god yeah they... i was obsessed about armin van buren at one point um this is like when a state of trance was like happening and my exposure to electronic music believe it or not guys is psychedelic trance i used to go to raves and that kind of um translated into trance which is when Armin came in or as i used to call him bhagwan buren is armin van buren so and uh, yeah it was a serious obsession i just thought he was someone who was doing trance music and this sound that i kind of got like hooked on to was at ultra music festival in 2011 um i saw him on the main stage and i was like oh my god what just happened and like i had a sensory overload like explosions and since then i ep- saw like videos of his he used to give tutorials online um very cool he would carry actual cds not like pen drives like that we have today or sd cards which are just faster they, they they work faster he actually had cds which he like puts into these physically to play one track each and that is like sheer 
talent like that is how it used to happen back in the day right that's like playing on vinyl um he's someone who is now I also continue to have my respect because he's learned to adapt and change with the times he's still relevant and not a lot of DJs stay relevant for yeah. so many years so Armin van Buren was one of them who I was these are the certain things that I looked up to like you know having authenticity with like his CDs and he he used to literally spend a lot of time back then educating other people as well about the do's and don'ts of DJing exactly what we're doing right now um then came Kaigo do you know Kaigo he used to play tropical house music he actually invented a genre called tropical house and that's when i was like oh my god like who are you where did you come from um and top, like how did you create a genre that's so cool right um had the good fortune of actually playing the same day he was playing at sunburn in 2011 that was my debut wow. and um, met him backstage oh, told nice. him how big a fan i am and then fast forward to i attended a festival in bali ultra music festival went backstage and by the way you need to learn how to network to get backstage so that's a really good question what's the art of networking to get backstage um definitely who, who should you go find <laughs> like what's the art <laughs> There is definitely an art like yeah, there is but how so how do you make it backstage you find the cute guy do you see the eye contact or do you see the like, this person obviously obviously I'm a woman I'm definitely going to bat my eyelids first and then like lure the guy in and then just be like here is a tenner no no um nobody's going to accept a tenner firstly obviously a 100 dollar but <laughs> but i think but what's the art like, how do you reach backstage for novices so, um So for novices I think it's definitely hard like I would just have a lot of patience to accept rejection and be cool with it like um there are there are ways you know you get tables and then you get access to backstage that's when you have bands and that's when they can't say no to you now when you don't have access you suss the vibe see who's hanging around the bouncer make friends with the bouncer talk to them being like yo what's up man like what's going on you know they'll say you don't have a band and say i know but like Here's my artist profile. Um you know, I opened for Black Coffee in India and um you know, open for Jan Blomquist and Korolova etc. Like I've been in the scene, you know, for a while. What about you? He's like, "Oh my god, you opened for Black Coffee?" And I'm just like, "Yeah, do it." Like, you know, so so have that shit ready. Like, you know, you can actually show people your Instagram and say, "Um I'm just like not trying to blow my own trumpet, but like I've worked for 10 years to get here and see here's some BTS." and they might just say that okay hold on hold on you have to kind of wait you have to be really patient and then uh, somebody might come and talk to you somebody may not come and talk to you but that's on you like then the rest is on you um novices i i would say that i used to be a novice and i always tried so just try like for novices what's the worst that's going to happen they're going to say no thank you so as a dj you've studied business how do you develop a business mindset which according to the research i did means you need to contribute to the music industry and have a loyal tribe yes um so being an artist doesn't necessarily mean that you would be good at business um you know some most creatives are just an art, yeah yes. they're just creatives yeah. like they know how to do what they do but beautifully like yeah. nobody else can replicate that um that's when you know you 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 the person that's going to represent you that's when it's equally as important because they need to understand business and have basic business acumen to ensure that your career goals align with you know everything that they're trying to do like it's about you and it's about your growth and about your journey and this these other you know elements become a part of that journey and you kind of grow together right um so it is very important to i think if you reach a certain stage in the beginning you try to do everything on your own that's how you're going to learn like that's the best way of learning about a business is that do it yourself rather than entrusting in someone immediately try to learn the ways you know by getting your feet on the ground going to these clubs talking to people like actually understanding how things work like bu- building the music of business is that strive for excellence strive for that perfection like don't let that person say are theek hai na yaar sound isi bhi baja le yaar bass nahi hai usme kaise bajayenge you know that's the part where you have to really be like nahi main nahi compromise i'm not going to compromise 
and I'm gonna I saw I saw like you know Ambika struggle when she was playing her set like you know the knobs and all are not working we have to get a better sound system they're like nahi nahi chalega these are all learning experiences like take notes of it and the next time you're about to play ask these questions being like hey listen I need to know if these things are going to happen or not that is you're then helping the vendor for example ensure that he has really good equipment all the time you're ensuring that the su- the sound person who's rented their uh, given their equipment out for rental you're helping them understand that hey i do need to fix that you know that's how we're going to kind of grow you have to like keep communicating keep you know keep that conversation going all the time okay has your business degree helped you yes i think so i think that i i mean i majored in marketing and global business management and uh, and I did photography black and white photography on like a film camera as well in my senior year so I think that there were and the journey of like I, I didn't talk about it but like Indian classical so I've learned Indian classical for 6 years uh, when I was a very young girl and then kind of like translated into lead vocalist of a rock band you know so a lot of exposure to really good rock music and a lot of like metal um angry music <laughs> and then the psychedelic trance and the trance and then in college it was more like it was everything actually it was like hip hop r&b rap you know jazz contemporary bollywood and um there was at that point there was nothing electronic at all yeah you know you just went out clubbing and partying and i loved it i absolutely loved it i think that gave me exposure to the housey music that i play it was just amazing global dance music like just beautiful sounds and i still play a lot of those tracks by the way like from you know eric Pre- eric prids that's when i got exposed to it so some tracks that i heard then like call on me obviously um i still play today which is insane it's like 15 20 years later it's still it's still relevant you always work right oh dude i am nostalgia for me is if if my if i don't have goosebumps like i'm not feeling and nostalgia gives me that feeling but yeah so just uh, circling back to the business degree helping in college it was a really good exposure of you know meeting people from all walks of life like diversity helps that it gives you that much more um like um that much more into other people's music and lifestyles and like i heard spanish music latin music cultural touch cultural touch exactly yeah. um so so not only are you getting that you're also getting you know club culture and it, it, that was intro to proper introduction to dance music electronic beats things like that tell me what a bad gig and what goes wrong and then what like what um, happens i mean okay yeah bad could be from you kind of preempt that it's about to happen because they've like booked you cuz you're a girl then like you i've seen this you know so you kind of see it coming and you're like oh shit like but what given, happens what happens yeah you've given your commitment you can't go yeah. back on your word you are not going to go back yeah. on your word obviously and you land up out there and lo and behold of course like there is a certain you know um there's a certain way you are treated uh, because you know you're it's also like 9 years ago i'm talking yeah. about the example i'm giving literally like just a sausage fest and you are the only girl out there and yeah. you happen to be the dj so like what are you going to do right so you just like holding your pride you're literally like you got this girl like just don't even you know and yeah they say crash shit it's happened it's yeah. happened like maybe they just they don't realize they're saying it but they say crash it and you're like it's fine it's okay move on keep going you're here for work stay professional like do your shit and there have been gigs where people have kind of you know rad, like just casually frisked you inappropriately yeah. and you're just like oh, no like that ain't happening but you don't have and you don't have someone like at the back saying yeah i got this that this is when you're like representing yourself you're kind of like throwing yourself in the deep end so there've been like really lechy people who've just uh judged you like objectified you and and um that that shit's hard it's that's the hardest part um and like they just say things and expect like no consequences i'm not going to tell you the kind of shit i've been told on tv but uh but yeah there have been on instagram so there okay. have, yeah <laughs> that's true that no but this is isn't this on youtube as yeah. well yeah um and then you have uh like gigs where you know again they they come with an expectation that you should be playing a certain kind of sound like you should be and i'm like what just like bollywood babe bollywood yeah yeah but that's like, a big pressure i've, I've seen it <laughs> myself how do you change that 
uh dude you just got to stay patient and authentic to yourself like there is i've been asked numerous number of times when i started djing why i shouldn't just play bollywood like you know you your ticket like your yeah. sale <laughs> price yeah. will go so high and i'm just like you know i really enjoy it you play sukhbir tomorrow i'm the first person on the dance floor but yeah. i'm not the one playing it you know yeah. i i i appreciate it like crazy uh, but i don't necessarily want to uh, deviate from what, what's feeling very natural and coming instinctively and i i do think that that is that kind of pressure should not try and for it not to get to you like if there are other people saying you need to do this you should do this as a sound play kar you know ye aajkal chal raha hai like ye sab ye crafting cheeze na ye zyada nahi chalte hain yeah and uh, take us through some of the good gigs good um some of my best gigs have actually been in tier 2 cities in india why um, they you know the the acceptance the energy they are coming with a very open heart because you know they don't get access to these kind of parties that you know metro cities get access to they're kind of like intrigued about who is this you know magical being who is like playing these magical like tones notes and uh, and what is this big production and uh, you know they tier 2 cities some of my best shows have been in raipur nagpur agra um you know of course goa is goa is goa you know goa brings a whole other energy uh, out there i i have a, a really long list of good gigs but i can remember that the smaller cities bring the most um real energy like it's very unfiltered it's very raw and i love that and they're very kind people man they just walk up to you and they like pour their heart out they're like what's the worst that will happen we just want to tell her how we feel so oh, and then globally i would say um opening for claptone at summer club in new york city was amazing and playing in uh, at nebula which is manhattan's like largest club great sound system so so how does it work out good. did you reach out to them or they reach out to you oh dude i reached out like this is the this is just circling back to the networking part like don't be shy man just like ask you're probably going to get rejected but then you'll keep trying and that's what i did i've just tried to stay consistently on it and keep building my portfolio and that's also why it's important to have like some concrete information being like this is who i am these are the gigs i've done you know or i'm this is the journey i'm on this is the music i've produced this is the person i've collaborated with like keep that kind of um going so um yeah so who are some of your favorite artists i see lots of Records, oh yeah. yeah these these are this is TV Wonder who was one of my I mean my parents uh, favorite one of their favorite artists and some of their collection um this is these guys these guys I'm sure you, you whoever is in the electronic music scene right now has to know these guys should know these guys I've been obsessed about the three of them they're three German um producer DJs by the name of Anmi Rampa and um Adam Port and they are absolutely phenomenal they have started a movement literally um you know confluence of different sounds soundscapes global soundscapes coming together from the perception of three individually incredible artists you know and they've been in the, they've been around for years and years and years i discovered them maybe what 6 7 years ago and i've been obsessed since then literally being like please come to india didn't happen so i went and saw them um in new york city last summer somehow got a ticket even though it was sold out just kept kept going kept asking people being like do you have a ticket and by the way i did this on the streets alone being like hey hi do you have a ticket no okay and then wait 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 and not then half an hour later 45 minutes later some avenue opens up and you kind of like you know you make it and then i saw them at burning man which was which was amazing sunrise set kind of music so there three artists who come together to create a movement a collaborative effort who i really look up to i i think they're the real, real deal and speaking of another experience which i just had this summer was bonobo have you heard of yeah. bonobo right he's come to india quite often as well dude i had the good fortune of getting a free ticket gifted to me by someone and we were again searching for tickets on the streets outside knockdown center which is an absolutely phenomenal venue and got the ticket went inside and firstly got exposed to another new dj which was amazing and now he's also coming back to india for nh uh, nh7 in pune his name is rumer amazing human being amazing dj french dj uh got inside 
managed to hustle my way into backstage of course and obviously it's easier because you're you're alone right if you're in a group it's harder like they're gonna the chances of all of you getting in very low um if you know if you don't pay money big big money um and then go backstage and i had literally a bird's eye view of bonobo he's a magician that guy is like unreal he's not only a fantastic music producer but what he did on the console for me was just pure knowledge like he was literally using hot cues sorry these are just like but good terms. for people who are watching would know yeah dude yeah. hot cues oh my god i saw what bonobo was doing with hot cues he created this journey beautiful journey because he was going on playing purposely triggering sounds to play play with our minds and i was like oh, i can't believe he just did that oh my god i didn't even know this equipment had this function i just made eye contact with him did he just wink at me like the coolest things were happening and you're like you know so he for me was is magical i i i liked him now i love him and uh, like him i i think there is not just one artist or dj like there are so many different black coffee for example is someone i respect again for creating a movement and a entire entirely different um genre of music called afro house well afro beats and afro house and now it's It's global. I mean, everybody who play Afro and everyone's kind of like, yeah. Maybe you can that? start a indie, indie. Well, actually, like it started movement. Indo Warehouse. Yeah. So you know, speaking of people that I really admire and look up to, I mean, there's Kahani and Kunal Merchant. Um, they're uh, American-born Indians who have started a label called Indo Warehouse, and dude, it's fire. They literally sold out Brooklyn Mirage, which is one of the largest venues in New York City. Sold out shows all over North America. Now they recently played in London, and they are creating this like. you know very nice desi bollywood meets nice afro tribal bass sexy music you know and it has global recognition already sold out shows i think they're coming to india soon um i do play quite a lot of their stuff and have in my own way kind of always try to include little samples of like indian vocals i mean I, i'm a singer yeah. soon to be singer singer performer whatever but uh, are you going to start so, becoming a professional singer as well yes in how long do we all have to wait uh i can sing for you now if you want so why don't you sing a line for you yeah for ambi what what song do you okay tell Any. me tell me something that you've been listening to recently i don't i barely listen oh come on ek gana to hoga i don't acha pranav ka uske husband I'm, I'm, husband I'm loves listening, electronic music i'm only music. listening to 50 cent cuz i'm going for the concert <laughs> go shorty It's your birthday. We're gonna party like it's your birthday. We're gonna sip a cocktail like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give up. It's your birthday. So exciting! <laughs> so when is it gonna be out? Not a rapper, guys. I promise, singer. But when are you planning? To? Um, I, so right now I'm kind of in that like um, discovery, rediscovery phase where I'm just listening to a lot of like uh, old school stuff. Um, you walked into my room. I was listening to like the sound of rain. Just kind of. rekindling with my creative that side that is so exciting and yeah. talking more about you you are so much into fitness as per your instagram account tell us about your regime what do you eat or don't you eat the um i mean you tell me you've had two kids and you look so sexy no, come on you, you tell me aapka raaz kya hai kuch to bata i mean ek cheez bata i keep trying i keep trying yeah i've seen ambi at the gym by the way we like cross each other and she's always like wearing her fancy shades and walking past and saying babe you do you and i'm like you do you too girl which is like <laughs> backing each other up but um fitness yeah it's honestly you asked me that question actually i can tie it into that you asked me that question about what does it take to become a good dj or like what does it become to become a dj yeah. i think investing in yourself like in terms of your well being and health is the most important thing that you can do to become a successful individual forget just being a dj now when you add the djing layer that's like crazy hours sleepless nights like you know there can be a lot of drinking odd hours to eat food you know not having access to clean food not knowing what to do so i make sure that for the week that i'm not traveling you know have like a routine routine is so important like wake up as early as you can or if you work late then definitely have a cut off time like get your 6 7 8 hours of sleep for sure and the days that you can't like don't get enough you can compensate on the sunday or whatever you know absolutely absolutely do not 
compromise on what you put inside your body because that is something that will come back later and pat you in the ass. Um, obviously, be careful of the amount you amount of liquor you consume because that shit can actually kill you. I mean, rest in peace, Avicii. But that's it was just horrible. Like he, he actually, it's he suffered, and we don't want to suffer. So investing in your health and well-being is really important. Work out, go for walks. Um, you know, when you are uh, going for gigs, make sure that if you're going out of the city, make sure that you know you try to go to the park or like. Hit up the gym or call a friend and go out for to discover the city. You know, do some stuff like that. Obviously, eat as well. I'm a huge foodie. Huge. That is like that's something. That's why I work out the way I work out because I have a love and love relationship with food and sugar spe specifically. A lot of people have heard me talking about my addiction to sugar, so that's why I was like sugar specifically, and that shit's hard. And uh, what about packing for your gigs? What are the clothes? What's the kind of vibe uh, you try to create? Oh, uh, I mean. It's always evolving. You've seen, sorry. Yeah, I've seen the images on Instagram. So lots of bright clothes, lots of accessories, lots of uh, uh, well tailored, uh, cool, chic, um, magical clothes that make sure you're slaying. So, what's the recipe? All right. Uh, the recipe now, ten years later, is that um, I I know that the, I can't be good at everything. So I actually identify someone or some people rather who are good at. Styling. Do you have a stylist? I have, of course I have a stylist. Ooh. Chitrakshi, you're watching this. I love you, baby girl. I miss you. She's moved to London now. Oh, so she has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was literally a shot in the dark. I put it out into the universe, being like, universe being social media, that I'm looking for a stylist, and one thing leads to the other. But she can style you from London as well. I mean, it's kind of a vibe because she comes home, we chill, we oh, chill. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and then we come up with creative shit. So um, we just did a shoot very recently and. Uh, but this is 10 years later when you can actually afford to invest in a stylist and I would say definitely do that. I mean, you don't need to be a fashionist here. But uh, for me, that not only is that giving the responsibility to someone who's better than me and knows what they're doing, it also reduces, reduces my wastage time. Like I don't waste time thinking, thinking about what, what to wear. take out, what to because I know I have a very quick so I know you're traveling, so let's see what you're going to carry with you. Where all are you going? What are you going to pack? Um, I usually plan this with the stylist, but okay. but I am going to Goa. So I'm going to think of like, obviously denim shorts, you know, easy tank like this, maybe like a jacket for when it, if it gets a little windy at night, some nice cool accessories. Um, they usually have special stories. My rings, of course. I do need my watch to check my, yeah, I put dance on just to like check how many steps I do. A comfortable pair of shoes or a cool pair of shoes, socks obviously, my box of nuts for when I get hungry on the plane, um, a little Bluetooth speaker, my AirPods, chewing gum and uh, yeah, I think clothing wise there's also sometimes when you land up at the uh, city you're going to or new country you're going to or whatever you kind of want to wear the their style as well so I would just go out and pick out some shoes or earrings or something and throw it over but yeah always represent your style though so yeah I do spend time now thinking about how I would like to put it out into the universe because amazing yeah. thank you so much Avantika thank you thank you so much uh, Ambi for taking out the time I think it takes a very um, very entrepreneurial powerful woman also to to uh, want to get other women to share their stories, of course. especially being a DJ. An amazing story. Congratulations. Thank you. Can't wait for you to become a singer. Woo! To be new Beyonce. T minus two weeks, three weeks. No, I don't know. I really don't know. It's not going to be singer, singer by itself, but like, you know, DJing, singing, ah. and then the original stuff, which is happening, which is, yeah. Yeah. It's all very cool. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you, I'm around and you may contact me at, no I'm just kidding. <laughs>